بين الرجاني تيتايت الأوفيتش إز دي أتيكال أند ليجل ستركتشر فور إيجاست سوشيال ميديا بابليك سكير موست ريسيرشرز أكسبرتس أند يوزرز ذمسلز أجريد دات أمونغ ذا مين تشالنجرز بيفور سوشيال ميديا بلاتفورمز إز دي ريجوليشنز أند دي تيرمز أند كونديشنز أوف يوز أوف ذيس ميديا إن أي ديجيتال وورلد وير سوشيال ميديا بلاتفورمز are uh, becoming uh, uh, the uh, this has led to many communicative uh, practices that polluted uh, media by uh, falsifying news by uh, publishing fake news and uh, here lies the challenge uh, at the national regional and international level as uh, there is uh, a strong polarization and Uh, uh, today's world. Uh, this uh, would make the problem worse. Uh, we will not, uh, through our conference, try to diagnose what's happening as part of this polarization, but we will try to come up with solutions that uh, would lead to a better ethics in the use of social media platforms. We are pleased to have in this session Dr. Nabil Dajani. He is uh, a, a professor of media studies uh, at uh, the Department of uh, Sociology, Anthropology, and Media Studies uh, at the American University of Beirut, uh, where he also served uh, as, as assistant dean of its faculty of uh, arts and sciences. Mr. Dajani uh, was uh, also a visiting scholar at Leicester University in England and a Fulbright scholar at Georgetown University. Between 1971 and 1975, he was a member of the UNESCO's International Panel of Experts on Communication Research that contributed to initiating the international debate for a new world communication order. Uh, but please uh, uh, join me in welcoming Dr. Nabil Dajani. Good morning. Thank you. I'm extremely delighted to join this very unique. Uh, I hope that my uh, speech uh, or presentation today. will be slightly different uh, than yesterday's uh, deliberations. Uh, yesterday's presentations were rather positive, uh, and unfortunately, my intervention will not be very positive uh, when it comes to social media platforms. I uh, do not know how long I will take, I still did not uh, get, uh, uh, I still did not get to catch up my breath. I am uh, 86 years old. It takes me some time to go into the gists of it. When I was uh, in college, uh, I had a professor who used to tell me uh, a presentation should be long enough to cover the topic of discussion, but it has to be short enough to be an interesting one. I hope my <coughs> speech today will be or will hit these two requirements. The age of social media is ending. The never 
حدا عم بيحكي معي In a provoking article entitled The Age of Social Media is Ending. It should never have begun. The Atlantic magazine contributor, Iam Bogos, argues that social media was never a natural way to work, play, and socialize, though it did become second nature. It produced a positively unhinged sociopathic redemption of human sociality, polarizing, offensive, or just plain fraudulent information. <coughs> fraudulent information was optimized for distribution. The whole idea of social networks was connecting, not publishing, De deepening relationships mostly with people one, one knew. However, connection was a primary purpose has declined. Social networks, social networks developed into social media that offered platforms through which people could publish content as widely as possible well beyond their networks of immediate contacts. By the time the platforms realized that the public and the public revolted, it was too late to turn off these feedback loops. He maintained that to win the soul of, the soul of social media, we must learn to muzzle it again. Across the globe, among billions of people, to speak less to fewer people and less often. We cannot make social media good because it's fundamentally bad. Deep in its very structure, all we can do is hope that it withers away and play our small part in helping abandon it. <coughs> Discussing the role of social media in politics in a chapter <coughs> discussing the role of social media in a chapter of a book on rethinking the world we knew, Diana Owen observes that the new political so social media system evolved haphazardly with no guiding principles or goals. Consequently, she argues that we are living in a post era that marked a new law for the democratic imperative for a free press and the role of fake news that are attached to fictitious stories made, no, made to appear as if they were the real news. <coughs> Professor of social theory at, at Swarthmore College, Barry Schwartz argues in his two, 2004 book the paradox of choice, why more is less, <coughs> that too many, too many choices had, okay, still here. <coughs> okay, now it's much better. Uh, he argued that too many choices lead to less choice and, con and confusion, and Kate Lindsay proposes that the social media platforms are presently less relevant than ever. She expounds that indulgence in the use of social media makes it hard to find our friends and, re and re rationalizes that it turns out that gathering more than a quarter of the world's population in one place creates the same problem as inviting too many random people to a party. So with this introduction, I can sort of get into my subject. The debate on the role of social media is still in, is in its infancy. No one can claim that they know that they have definite answers about the magnitude of this, of this role, its impact and effectiveness. 
Social media effects are only one of the, of the several political, economic, social, and cultural aspects that influence mass popular movements. The interdependence of mass media with modern electronic media technologies resulted in the revolution that highlighted enormous possibilities in the field of communication, including the development of the World Wide Web system. This network has changed to the system of human interaction and opened up new areas of communication that one could not have dreamed of. The World Wide Area Network, Internet, launched qualitative revolution in the possibilities of mass communication and led to the development of modern social media platforms. These platforms have changed the pattern of media communication and are no longer limited to messages sent in one direction, often This platform has changed the, the, the pattern of media communication and are, are no longer limited to messages seen, sent in one direction from channels owned by states or from the other owners, individuals or institutions who have the material and technical means. The introduction of the internet and its innovation opened new opportunities for interaction among individuals and groups. The, up, the upsurge of social media platforms in the world wide <coughs> witnessed the opening of new interaction avenues, allowing individuals and groups to share information and connect in new, previously conceived to be unattainable. In theory, social media allows everyone to interact to interact with it or its audience by sharing and expressing. However, the reality is that there are significant obstacles and cautions to such interaction. While the social media platforms have opened new prospects of sharing information and connecting among individuals, there is also evidence to suggest the social media have, get, ha, have detrimental effects. Social media have become an unescapable presence in the daily lives of people. Through the social media, individuals and groups can find and engage with others who can relate to their opinions and experience. Content shared, shared on social media can potentially increase audience reach and message significance. We are constantly connected through platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapshot, and more. These new media platforms have established themselves as powerful channels for public discourse and an, an integral part of the public sphere, allowing for a comprehensive exchange of ideas. Alternatively, while there are many benefits to using social media, we must also address the potential consequences of the overuse and abuse of it. Social media platforms can be abused to manipulate opinion by spreading misinformation and selecting message, message sources. Evidence suggests that the more these platforms spread emotionally charged content, the wider audience spread it achieves. Con consequently, the shared contact on social media can potentially go viral, resulting in increased audience reach. Social media platforms thus can intensify negative misconceptions and prejudice can be intensified by distributing offensive information and fake news. Additionally, social media platforms are often used to control and repress individuals 
by preventing the flow of adverse ideas and stifling opposing voices and opinions. <clears throat> As the public sphere continues to evolve, social media will continue to be a crucial tool for social change. However, to say that social media platforms are the cause of social change is a statement that needs to be scrutinized and proved. History is replete with news of people who, who protested and toppled governments long before the internet and Facebook. Communication between the, the then rebellious masses was face to face through direct human interaction. Unfortunately, the face to face medium goes unnoticed or receives sporadic, atten sporadic, sporadic attention nowadays. While social media platforms were introduced to help in creating opportunities for, for a person or a group's message to be seen and heard, exper experience has shown that these platforms can set up their own ideological criteria to monopolize the, the online space by blocking information sources. Social media users are thus subjected to the view and rules of platform administrators. There are, therefore, as the ethical and legal framework for a just social media public, public sphere requires ensuring the right to express uncensored, confrontational, or unpopular views, the, integ the integrity of individuals, and the value of their privacy must be protected. The advantage of these platforms are undeniable, but social media can also have negative effects in our society. In addition to increasing the, vulnerab the vulnerability to provide violations, expressive ex experience has shown that social media can do aggressive negative misconceptions and prejudices, as well as spread cyberbullying. By, co by connecting people, social media is often used to spread the rumor and to manipulate public opinion. <clears throat> what we are witnessing today is social media tolerance that ignores life matters and turns to sheep attractive at attraction without giving sufficient attention to developing a real climate of interaction between citizens with each other. Priority is given to structural changes at the expense of ethics and professionalism, which leads to the spread of culture far from social responsibility, dominated by a bazaar mentality. As a result, the freedom, of, the freedom to interact with the common person is confused with the freedom to pursue material or emotional profit. It is important to consider the ethical issues that arise when we engage in social media. These media can provide a platform for people to harass, shame, and bully other individuals with relative anonymity. In addition, we, we need to be, to be conscious of the potential psychological effect of social media use. Such an addiction and cyberbullying, an ob obsessive fa focus on social media can become an addiction. It also can construct online relationships at the expense at the expense of real relationships and hinder people from engaging in realistic social interaction by, ne by neglecting their relationships in the real world and disconnecting them, them from people around them. Now I can move to talk a little bit about the Arab social media. Practice in the Arab world has shown 
that the re real difficulty is in what might be called the integration of technologies with the social structure. The adoption of social media technologies causes a new style of work, a new way of production, and even new content. These technologies are usually imported from countries that are culturally different from us and do not necessarily fit our culture or way of life. From here, we must adopt, we must adapt imported technologies to our needs and conditions. Social media platforms are, <coughs> are double-edged swords. They can raise important issues, put them on the agenda of citizens' debate, and positively, and positively affect their awareness. On the other hand, they can contribute to the destruction of national values or achievements. A serious negative consequence of the use of social media is the low level of communication in the public sphere, which results in abandoning the discussion of important life matters and the possibilities of turning them into immoral, marginal, and unhelpful matters. Another downside of indulgence in social media, which is, which is given little attention by Arab scholars, is the, weak, is the weakening of the Arabic language as a result of the use of foreign characters in writing Arabic. It is clear that the new social media platforms can play an important role in shaping events in the Arab world. There is no doubt that Facebook, Twitter, and mobile phones have contributed to the rapid dissemination and transfer of information to those who are generally not in their contact. These platforms can potentially contribute to the amplifying, amplifying development to amplifying development. However, the absence of Arab media policies and plans that link the social media platform with our inst other institutions of society has led to the media chaos and cultural entropy. Media platforms in the Arab world are becoming a serious magnifier of the dealing with, with under the surface racial and religious prejudices that pre presently plague the communication scene in the Arab world. The, the problem of Arab social media platforms appears to be mainly from the lack, or rather the inability of Arab planners to develop, to develop clear plans and policies linking various social institutions to the goals of their society as a whole. Social media platforms can, indeed, produce the type of modernizing or change messages and themes that are typical in Western media platforms. But these messages and themes are often alien to their own cult cultural norms and will certainly introduce cultural entropy. Adopting anthropic messages <coughs> and themes may result in having our societies pay a, lit a high price and to the neglect of basic development needs. Modernization is not achieved by adapting the problems of developed societies that we generally have nothing to do with. Rather, it often leads to neglecting the, the actual problems of society. A pressing question we must address when, when deliberating about the ethical structure of social media platforms in the Arab world is, is it possible and how to use the social media in ways other than those in which they are currently used so that this Arab world 
at the level of countries as well as individuals can, pr can preserve the various humanizing advantages and increase the possibilities of the weak, the poor, and even the ignorant to participate effectively in decisions that reflect their lives, whether at the level of society or individual. The problem facing Arab culture does not lie in, in the issue of media freedom or disorder as much as it lies in the issue of the freedom of the citizen and the rehabilitation in their field of democratic participation in their society. The development of cultural, of cultural being requires exerting effort to control the progress of technologies lest we reach a state in which, our, which, in which we are unable to control these technologies economically or even humanly. There should also be caution against in in embracing a misconception of democracy. We must recognize the eternal dilemma facing Arab societies in choosing between effectiveness and justice and between influence and freedom, cultural and media po uh, problems on the Arab, uh, sorry, cultural and media pollution in the Arab world must be given more attention and importance. We have certainly reached a very advanced, advanced stage of importing media platforms that have the greatest impact on polluting our culture and the minds of Arab masses. Uh, the most important issue we need to address in the, in the path, in this path, is the assessment of important social media platforms in light of the needs of our societies. Such as, such an objective requires a focus on the socializing impact of the social media on the users as well as tracing the work of the social media platforms and their operators. These platforms allow uses of varying benefits and functions. Hence, it is reasonable to advocate for the regulation of the use of these means through the development of policies that are based on the needs of our societies and thus emerge from, from or are <coughs> sorry, in, in harmony with our culture. It is necessary, therefore, to establish controls that allow confronting the onslaught of foreign culture <coughs> and media. Such controls require the regulation of the flow of social media and cultural programs and materials that may have a negative impact on our society. <coughs> this platform, this approach, will be the, the, the avenue for a common Arab culture and media platform that emerges from our need. In order for this quest to succeed, we must begin by strengthening the basic elements of social media and cultural production. The, the, the dominance of social media platform designed for the public that is culturally and morally different from ours have, has resulted in our cultural exchange becoming less culturally equivalent. The level of our culture has dropped and it has become a mere commodity to which the provisions employ that what applies to other material goods in a Western dominated world order. The present world order narrows the field of competition and contributes to undermining the sovereignty of national culture in the course of a concerted, intense foreign cultural 
and values pressure. Western values have become dominant in the programs of our social platform. By entering a confused modernity and the structure of our civic education, even our family structure has been affected. Foreign cultures are popularized to the, to the Arab common people, and thus the media operating within the, cult, the current world order are contributing to making national culture alien to the common Arab person. This is usually carried out, it, out within the so-called modernization process during which culture is, if, culture is codified as its, and its attention is diverted towards universality or so that traditional values and arts are localized that look, sorry, so that traditional values and, and arts that localize culture disappear and we see Western popular cultural culture blending with our popular culture and sometimes even swallowing it. The advancement of Arab human communication potentials entails its harmony with national development needs, long-term principles that ru and rules that guide the performance of Arab media systems are, are required. Its orientation should be determined by the analysis and identification of existing practices as well as on the formulation of new principles and rules appropriate to the achievement of desired objectives. The social media platforms have freed and the communication process from many of the restrictions that used, that used to, be, to limit the communication of individuals and groups. However, the manipulation of these platforms in particularly feasible to those who possess, and, and, and to, who, who possess advanced technologies and, and equipment here lies the danger of the domination of technologi technologically and materially advanced countries over the lacking of the lag lagging countries in this field, as well as the danger of commercial enterprises controlling the way the public consumes these media. The mental energy generated by interactive media technologies are produced or managed by transitional of corporations, and these transition, tr transnational institutions control the channels of communication in growth-seeking countries. Social media do not operate in a vacuum, but within a social reality. So they must operate in the context of the social and ethical responsibilities of their society. This is an important factor in the formation of mental understanding or awareness of the citizen's view of, his, of, of their society and the world. The content provided by social media platforms, such as cultural in entertainment or other messages, does not necessarily lead to the realization of the truth, but contributes to the formulation of a new hyper-reality that contributes to the westernization of our youth. The present hegemony of foreign countries, of, of foreign cultures, on our, of our interaction channels and their content has led to the alienation of the Arab public rather than the facilitating and facilitating their participation in society. This alienation is often earned, carried out through providing a content that is not connected to the Arab cultural reality, which prompts the common people to revolt against their own values and lifestyle. Social media platform can play an enormous role in distracting people from their local problems and turn their attention away 
from their real social and national problems to focuses to focus on important foreign and superficial ones. A reflective contribution to our pr present discussion about social media here is perhaps the discussion of the impact of globalization on the Arab world by two renowned Moroccan scholars, Hamad Abed Al Jabri and Abdel Aziz Belkaziz. The new social media platform brought about in the Arab world what Belkaziz terms as an overflow in a society, an overflow in a society, in a society's need <coughs> for gratification that will kill the soul and take away the moral and human content of people's behavior. It will cause the individual to acquire an Im immunity defective, de an immunity deficiency disease. Belkaziz calls it for reflecting about strategic opportunity approaches to adapt our culture and society to the challenge posed by globalization. According to Belkaziz, perspective social media lays down a new revolution in history whose strength will be the human group instead of the state and national group. He argues that what is termed today as cultural globalization is not the transition from an era of local and national cultures to a new higher culture, which is world culture. Rather, it is an, a, an act of cultural usurp, usurp, usurpation and symbolic aggression against other cultures. Belkaziz contends that the true world culture is the cultures of all societies without exception and not merely Western culture. Muhammad Abel Jabri, on the other hand, proposes that by controlling cognition, the new media distracts the effectiveness of the mind. The logic, behind, the, the, the logic adapts and the value system is disrupted. He suggests that this produces a culture of penetration, which is based on a set of il illusions aimed at normalization and hegemony and the con consolidation of civilizational subordination. Al-Jabari argues that one of the results of the culture of penetration is the occurrence of duality and, and schism within the Arab cultural identity is split, is split between tradition and modernity. However, Al-Jabri warns against taking a position of total culture closer. He, he warns against taking a position of total closure as a reaction to cultural globalization, as well against the total ex ex acceptance of globalization or alienation, and calls for the need to renew Arab culture from within and rebuilding it and particip part participating and practicing modernity, seeking aspects of understanding and interpretation of, the, of its course allows linking the present with the past in a direction of the future. One of the important aspects of Al Jabari's pro probe of globalization highlights that what should be done and what should be rejected. In, in the face of cultural globalization, he, exp he, he stresses the importance of employing rationality and democracy in this probe and calls for the renewal of Arab culture from within by linking the present with the past and in the direction of the future. Now my concluding remarks here. <clears throat> Discussing the future of social media, <clears throat> I am bogus maintains that it's never felt more plausible that the, use, that the age of social media might end and soon. He cautions that if change is possible, carrying it would be <coughs> more difficult because we have adapted our lives 
to confront to social media's pleasure, pleasures and bothers. It's, it's, it's seemingly a hard, it is seemingly as hard to give up on social media as it is to give up on smoking uh, on, uh, in mass. We, we did so slowly and over time by forcing social life to suffocate the practice. That process must now begin in earnest for social media. Kate Lindsay qualifies that to ensure a just social media public, a just social media public sphere, a strong ethical and legal structure must be established and, uh, and adhered to by all involved. This is not me, this is not done by regulatory, by regulatory degrees, but is rather a social process. Indeed, addressing the, the, the mounting problems of the social media needs a social process approach and not mere regularity measures. The rapid and entropic development in the field of Arab social media has resulted in an addiction to, <coughs> to, new, to a new type of social reality that is not ethically or legally useful. Thus, addiction, this addiction is too firm to be brought to an end by immediate regularity decision. The necessary regulation need is to be part of an excessive long-term social process. This social process approach requires main, meaningful communication strategies that will bring about a change in thinking and acting. It is necessary to introduce positive roles <coughs> for the individual, for, for, for individuals and groups that help accept the promote and promote positive change as well as the development of local ideas and visions into practical plans for social development. To address this, Arab social media public need to be directed towards engaging in qualitative and positive messages, message production by providing interactive material related to the reality of their society, important culturally irrelevant programs that may contribute to the alienation of the common person needs to be subjected to regulation. If well-regulated, social media platforms can contribute to the formation of a new consciousness that, uh, that launches the possibility of new social development. Failure to develop policy-based plans for regulating and funct the functioning of social media has led to the transformation of our social media plat platform into means of this, this, this discordant identity and values means of social de development. Building a productive and effective Arab public requires special efforts to prevent the use of interactive means from developing into a, a situation where the society is unable to control it economically, humanly, and morally. Public planners must develop media policies that re re generate social media platform and able to reserve the people. It should be emphasized that calling for a media policy and planning should not, it should not mean uh, centralized orientation, but should be seen as a method of rational development of various interactive media activities. Proper planning opens up possible alternative proposals, allows for flexibility and innovation and provides opportunities for creativity. Proper planning does not reject traditional communication systems and interactive practices simply because it, they are drawn from the past. In cases where these traditional systems are out of, the, uh, of sync with, with future goals, they can be developed to integrate 
this with new social media and thus fits his goals. Thank you. Uh, for this very valuable presentation, very thorough discussion of a, uh, an issue related to the ethics of uh, a new social media. So this was discussed from different uh, angles. Raising a lot of questions and opening uh, opportunities for uh, dialogue. Uh, there's something that I remembered specifically, which is related to the necessity of realizing that this continuous dilemma before the Arab uh, communities in choosing between effectiveness and justice, between hegemony, power, and freedom. So this requires more uh, work on uh, fighting and uh, media and cultural pollution. So I think only this uh, sentence uh, could be discussed for hours. At, uh, the presentation also raised important topics, for example, uh, regulations and regula regulatory policies for uh, digital and social media platforms and justice and democracy. the cultural rapprochement due to uh, cultural globalization and also calling for modern content, but not like the Western modernity because this is an approach that doesn't uh, rely on traditional uh, communication means, as M uh, Mr. Dajani said. It also works on creating a new awareness that creates possibilities for uh, new social development. We open the floor for discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Nabil. I think it was a very scientific uh, and realistic uh, approach, even though we, uh, I like what you said at the beginning, that's very pessimistic regarding social media. What we've heard is indeed a scientific uh, perception, a realistic one, that looks at this approach as an international uh, phenomenon that doesn't only overshadow the Arab world, but also the whole world. So I would like to ask you something. If we are to understand this phenomenon, if we are to talk about uh, uh, culture, behavior, and the flatification of the culture, this is not something that only affects the Arab world, and this is real. When looking at literature, we see this uh, mentioned. I've lived in the West uh, for 20 years and then in the Arab world, so we see that this phenomenon affects everyone almost at the same level. And the influence uh, uh, could also be positive uh, in terms of uh, allowing freedom of expression, allowing minorities to express themselves, maybe operating a change or the changing the narratives. And the discourse in some causes like the Palestinian cause. So I think this phenomenon has to be understood as such. 
So here I would like to say that the approach should also be global, that is entering a, a dialogue and saying that our culture was affected, our language was affected as if uh, we live in a void. So I think you should you can hear the same uh, complaints from the same uh, from uh, the uh, different peoples of the world, not only our region. So I think this should be a, uh, a topic to be discussed by the United Nations, the General Assembly, the uh, League of Arab Nations, uh, etc. So sorry for having been lengthy. Thank you. Thank you for this excellent presentation. I do agree with you. This is an issue for the whole world, uh, and, uh, uh, and all including the developing world. But I disagree with you uh, when you say that all societies have the same problems. I uh, was a member in a con an advisory commission of the uh, UNESCO Secretary General in the 70s. Back then, we were uh, assessing the situation in different countries. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the Latin America was lagging uh, behind back then, but now it's uh, much closer to Northern America. Even Africa uh, has, uh, is way ahead of us. I think that uh, uh, in the media domain, we are lagging behind. Our Arab region most desperately needs conscious uh, media uh, policies. We lack the necessary talents to devise those policies, not because we don't have experts. Our experts <coughs> are being used to develop those policies. We have an issue with the governance, which is a real problem, because we don't have good uh, policies and good governance, unfortunately. A pessimism about the future of humanity uh, with these current practices of social media. And, they, and I think this is a logical conclusion because uh, there, there, there is a tremendous gap here between what we hoped from social media when it emerged in, in, in uh, uh, the, the beginning of the, 20th uh, of the 21st century and what do people expect from social media to be harnessed for marginalized voices and defend justice and freedom and human dignity and provide equal opportunities for uh, the all humankind to choose their representatives in political and govern, uh, governing spaces. However, what happened faster than we uh, may ever imagined is the hegemonic powers, networks become more stronger than ever. Organic surveillance becomes structural and deeply rooted in the al almost every aspect of our daily life practices. Our privacy is totally invaded with biometrical parameters everywhere. So what I think could be the syncatory of this reality? I think there, there are here are two trajectories. The first trajectory is to work with the people, is to stay educating the people and uh, defending the basic human rights, because I doubt now, especially with the, with the, with the young generation, that they are, the, they are 
believe that they are entitled with full human rights. They think that maybe dictatorship is good for somehow. They think that uh, they do not need democracy. Uh, they, they can get whatever they, li they like without these basic human rights. And uh, this is a, another problem we have to face. Um, so we, we have to keep uh, calling for and defending and packing human, humans and uh, uh, to, uh, that they deserve to enjoy uh, these rights. And the other uh, trajectory is in predating a technological moment that will come one day just like the same moment of the Arab Spring, but there is no strong predators, the national predators, lawyer predators, to invest this moment for the good of the people. We have to invest this technological moment that, that will come one day with high potentiality to create social and political transformation. So this is uh, just a comment. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you. I, I agree with you, but the, the, the basic problem is uh, getting the people uh, to sort of take or understand the basic values that we, to we teach them in school, but they don't really translate them to reality. To reality. And, and here we have the problem of governance. The, the Arab world lacks a proper system of governance that allows the people to interpret what is given to them. Like, uh, I'll give you an example in my country in Lebanon. I think the Lebanese are more, most informed people about what's going on in the world. But unfortunately, they interpret these things in terms of their sectarian orientation or sect within their governance system, whereby you know that this is bad, but this is what your leader wants, and therefore your leader knows more than what is real. Uh, so the problem is, uh, it, what I'm trying to say is, the change that is needed for developing countries, particularly in the Arab world, is, is a social process uh, it had to be approached from a social process approach, whereby it is, it is more, it's educational. It has to go through a long phase of uh, uh, bringing the common person to a real understanding of his and his group's needs and not to see these needs within the governance system that he has, who has been taught that this is the proper governance system in which his country operates. This is a problem I see in my country. I'm sure you see it in Egypt, and I'm sure all Arabs will see it within their uh, governance system. Professor <laughs> المحاضرة قيمة وفيها الجديد والمثير والشيق. It brings the newness to this topic, and I learned a lot in this presentation and your previous articles. There are many researchers that that tried to adopt a critical reformist path. What I would like to comment on is. How you you explored uh, dealing uh, with the issues uh, related to social media, and uh, you focused on the fact that the starting point uh, should be uh, of a social uh, aspect, and you said that that uh, the ethical and legal uh, dimensions are also very important. So if we take uh, the legal dimension to deal with all the issues that uh, you highlighted, uh, law is the uh, resort of uh, uh, Arab uh, governments, uh, and uh, the outcome would be 
counter to what we would have hoped for. And in most cases, uh, the law would lead uh, to more restrictions. So the only window is that despite social media platforms uh, being uh, filled with issues, however, they present a certain freedom uh, space more than conventional media. And therefore, betting on the legal dimension uh, uh, will not uh, bear fruits. It will be rather risky. Another dimension you mentioned, which is a social uh, dimension uh, and uh, the uh, social starting point, this uh, raises a deeper problematic, which is that in our world, and usually in the developing world, uh, uh, politics take over uh, the economic and uh, social dimensions. Uh, once again, we go back to the center of power in the developing world, where uh, politics uh, take over the social sphere, and therefore we would be ahead of a, a dead end. Uh, so if we will look into alternatives uh, of uh, social nature to counter what is being imported, this might be weak as it lacks support, it lacks funding, and so forth. And if it turns to media for support, it would lose its uh, autonomy and uh, would lead to a lack of popular trust, uh, the trust of people, and therefore would lead it to become less influenced. So this is a compound problem. I do not have an answer to it, but I hope uh, you could uh, enrich this uh, discussion on how we could deal with this issue. Thank you for your uh, uh, comment. I do agree with you, but let me explain here. I want to apologize to you here. I am not uh, good at reading my uh, articles. Uh, I'm an old man, I'm 86, uh, and I reached a point where it's uh, easier for me to speak rather than read, and I wasn't able to uh, see clearly what uh, uh, I had uh, written. When I talk about the law, I do not mean the law per se. I draw their use the term governance. Governance encompasses law. And let me give you the example of my country, Lebanon. We do have uh, laws, we do have good laws, but we have bad governance. Uh, the law is not implemented. Oh, and uh, there are different uh, opinions uh, to the law. So I uh, rather prefer to use the word uh, uh, governance. And the governance that we need, for it to be good, it is a social process. It takes uh, its due course. Citizens should be taught and trained on the good participation in society. Unfortunately, we lack such good governance. And allow me to use uh, Lebanon as an example. Uh, we do have the uh, laws. However, the governance that we have leads citizens to think differently. So a Christian citizen would see things or interpret things differently than a Muslim citizen in Lebanon. And this holds true for almost all developing countries. Good governance does not uh, rely on uh, law only. It rather or it needs to ensure equality among people and ensure a, a similar or a unified manner in uh, interpreting laws. Definitely, laws are uh, uh, important. However, a good law is of no relevance uh, if there is no good governance. So I do agree with what you said, 
but I'd rather again insist on the need to have good governance and not uh, the law itself. In the same vein as what Dr. Bassouni said, uh, you talked about uh, the fact that this is a social process uh, uh, and it's a long-term uh, process and that there is a need to have some uh, controls uh, and regulation of social media and uh, that uh, there should be an involvement uh, from other uh, institutions here. So I do agree with you that this is a social uh, process and a long-term one, but what should be done uh, since, uh, for instance, uh, in, on the issue of uh, good governance? So what do we need to have uh, uh, the basis laid in education, for instance? Because I do notice a schism between uh, formal education and informal education, specifically when it comes to ethics. Uh, so could you please uh, clarify uh, uh, what you mean exactly by this uh, long-term process? Could you uh, please elaborate on that? Let me go back to the 70s uh, when I was in the consultative uh, uh, committee of uh, the UNESCO. We uh, uh, created the COMMD20, and I hope uh, you would be able to uh, read this uh, uh, version. We created like a blueprint uh, in relation to the implementation. So the social process starts first by collecting information about uh, existing media, uh, their, uh, uh, their uh, scope. Uh, uh, and the first step uh, starts with uh, collecting information. Based on such information, it is possible to put in place policies uh, that are gradual to reach social awareness and uh, develop uh, not only so, uh, media outlets, uh, but also media literacy. Media literacy on the how to use information that is garnered uh, through uh, social media and the media in general. If you go back to this uh, document uh, uh, that dates back to uh, the 70s uh, and produced by the UNESCO, it's a good read. Unfortunately, this is not being used. Uh, I can speak about my experience about uh, urging Lebanon to adopt this uh, document, uh, unfortunately. Uh, so I request, uh, or the UNESCO requested me to present uh, this uh, document uh, to the uh, Lebanese government. I submitted it to the President of the Republic. He was uh, very impressed, and he told me, go to the Minister of Education to implement it. And he said, like, it's a very good uh, uh, document, uh, and uh, uh, if the president wants it to be implemented, uh, uh, it, it's good. Let's see uh, how we can form a committee uh, to implement it. And he started uh, saying, uh, let's uh, see who among the Muslims we can have a member of this committee and uh, how many uh, Christians to do so. And when he did so, I told him, thank you so much. This uh, document will never be implemented. So this is the case uh, in uh, developing countries and in Arab countries. Good governance leads to good policies, and unfortunately, this is what we are missing. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor. Uh, I agree with uh, uh, your uh, key findings that we need to do something to make the digital media much more connected. Yesterday, we heard from uh, different speakers about the need to have uh, genuine participation, engagement, uh, and deliberations that uh, support you know, social transformation and democratization. Um, I wanted to, in terms of uh, the concrete steps, 
or measures that we can do to make sure that the social and cultural impact of uh, the digital is uh, much more meaningful. Um, there is also something called uh, Public Service Internet Manifesto. Some of my colleagues at the University of Westminster were advancing this. I don't know whether you heard about it, but it's the idea of taking you know, the public service media ideas into the digital age so that we can uh, reconfigure these platforms. These platforms are run normally on commercial basis, which are very hostile to uh, social cohesion, which are, I mean, we heard yesterday, for example, about hate speech, which can generate income. The more people argue, the more participation. Uh, so their model is, uh, is not very good for social engagement, for social transformation, and the cultural uses that you were hinting at. So at the moment, our hope could be to uh, foster these public service media ideas uh, on the digital to make sure that uh, some of those ideals about, you know, uh, I think uh, Professor Mchairo talked about, you know, how do we know, you know, genuine participation. The idea to engender, you know, uh, justice, uh, participation, and what you were talking about that there is need to connect, you know, uh, not just with a few people, but with the rest of society, the individual, the group. Um, at the moment, I think our best hope is to make sure that the internet is reconfigured, that we need to also bring forward some of the public service television ideas, public uh, service newspapers ideas. Can we also duplicate that in the digital age to make sure that there is public service internet, internet platforms that could be uh, providing a public service remit, remit in the digital age uh, to encourage debate, participation, and advancement of social cohesion. So I don't know in, 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 in this uh, region uh, whether we can draw from some of those public service ideas, cultural ideas that are public service. Uh, you have a very good, you know, uh, cultural fabric where people come together, like, you know, tomorrow, Friday prayers. There are some public engagements that could be used to bring together, you know, uh, people together for the common good. Uh, there are clear examples where people uh, are willing to uh, become members of a public uh, body. Uh, so in the digital age, uh, to what extent, my question is, to what extent can we, uh, from our different vantage point, you were talking about the Arab uh, region vantage point, can we bring these uh, um, big technology companies to bear some public service ideals? To what extent can we do that? Can we foster these public service ideals? Thank you, Professor. Uh, thank you. I think you touched on a very important issue. and. Uh, um, an issue that really uh, is, is crucial. We talk about public need and uh, uh, public service. Now, we have to define what we mean by need and what we need by service. And here is the problem. When we say we provide pub what the public needs, but uh, what do the public need? This is very important. Should we give people who need things, for instance, uh, do they need opium? If they need opium, should we give it to them? Should we give them things that are harmful? But then who decides what's, what is harmful and what's not harmful? Now, these issues are important. What is public service? What is the public service? Is it uh, when we have, we, we call for public debate. Uh, should we encourage any public debate? Should we, should the media provide public debate on any issue that the public wants, issues that are irrelevant? Should we, talk, for instance, in my society, should we talk about uh, 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 homosexuality, which in our society is legally banned? Uh, or, or should we 
Now, it is an important issue. I'm not saying it's not important. But is it the issue that my society needs? Uh, in, you know, in other words, when we talk about public debate, public service, and so on, we need, we need the really proper planning to sort of have public debate on issues that are crucial, crucial for development of our society. Unfortunately, the public debate that, is, that the West requires from countries like ours are issues, <coughs> debate on issues that are relevant to their societies, not to ours. Our, our, problem, our problems are different than the problems of other, other societies. So really, uh, I'm in agreement with you in general. Yes, public need, uh, public service, uh, public debate, all these are important. But what type of needs, what type of service, what type of debate? These are things, now I'm not saying that governments should determine these, but what I'm talking about, these needs have to be part of a social process determined by experts, by knowledgeable people that do not emerge only from their own way of thinking, but on a real study of the developmental, social, national, and cultural needs of a society. Thank you. شكرا بروفيسور دجاني اعتقد ما يقصده بروفيسور مانو من البابليك سيرفيس يعني اي بيليف ذات وات مستر مانو سيد از ا ديفرنت تايب اوف ميديا بي ذات كونفنشنال ميديا اور سوشيال ميديا اند وي مين باي ذات سوشيال ميديا ذات ار نوت فاندد اور ران باي Uh, governments uh, or businessmen and this is uh, a pattern or a media that is uh, or um, media that is available uh, in uh, uh, European countries uh, such as the BBC the public service uh, could be a good starting point uh, that would converge with what you said about the uh, long-term uh, social process to, to deal with the issues of so uh, uh, social media as currently uh, seen. An analysis of a social media platform uh, 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 concluded that 98% of uh, social media platforms were profit-making, with the exception of two, and uh, the uh, analyst called them uh, uh, service, uh, uh, public service media. One is Wikipedia, and the second was uh, the official website of the BBC. Thank you. Allow me here to be the devil's advocate. Uh, even if uh, a state or a profit-making uh, uh, entities uh, are uh, funding uh, or behind these uh, platforms. Any person who has, uh, 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 every person has the intention to serve, but if this intention is rather than being built on a personal motives, uh, if it's not built on a social plan, it would fail and would be damaging. But maybe, for instance, uh, a person's view of development in a society, it might not be in uh, harmony with the development plan that is needed in a state, for instance. So I believe that we uh, need to start with uh, good social policies uh, and plans. Uh, every person uh, or entity uh, could uh, thankfully do that, but this should fall as part of a social plan because uh, developing countries and specifically Arab countries, they do need good planning. 
it doesn't suffice uh, to allow citizens uh, or residents uh, to take uh, uh, to partake but uh, uh, we need to have a good plan it has to be carefully uh, tailored uh, uh, agreed upon uh, well discussed by development uh, experts first Good morning, Professor. I have a question. Do you think that uh, the West uh, monopoly of uh, social media and the media could lead uh, to a, uh, a certain uh, uh, a certain uh, uh, delay at the development uh, social cultural level? What do we have in our Arab world? Uh, the, uh, is the media playing a positive role? Unfortunately, no, it plays a negative uh, role. Uh, do we see any uh, social awareness? N unfortunately not. Do we have uh, aware societies in the Arab world? Definitely, there are uh, many important uh, issues uh, that are being highlighted uh, by the media. However, let me go back to planning, the uh, 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 media plans. Before a child is allowed to drive a car, he has to be uh, taught how to drive a car and uh, trained on it. So our public uh, needs training on social participation or social engagement. Uh, and. Uh, uh, needs uh, uh, media literacy to understand what could serve them and how to analyze what is uh, of benefit uh, uh, for them in social media. We, uh, as we grow, we need training. When we reach a point where we can drive the car, yes, we will be driving the car, but we are still in a phase where we're starting to mature, but we are still in childhood. We still need awareness on how to harness uh, social media and uh, media outlets before being able to use it uh, with absolute freedom. We need first uh, to know how to use uh, this uh, uh, energy or these resources. Are there any further questions? Uh, we, uh, with that, we uh, come to the end of our session. I would like to thank you, Professor, and I would like to thank uh, the audience uh, for the uh, important uh, comments and questions uh, to uh, Mr. Uh, Nabil Bijani's presentation. We shall take the coffee break before resuming uh, the second session of our day. Thank you. used social media networks to manage their wars and conflicts. What is the role of these networks in ideological polarization?